where they rule together, okay. essentially. I'm back. And that's why they're trying to herd everybody into these monopolistic uh, entities. And, uh, you know, what they want is uh, we want to have five banks and we want to have five brokerage houses and five insurance companies, something like that. And that's where it's all headed. And if you understand history and you understand what they're doing, you can prepare for it. And that's why you're listening to this program. We're telling you what to do. If you don't do it, well, you're going to get left out. Um, there's a question. There's a couple questions from uh, Joe. Um, when gold goes to 2000 and if someone had a huge position in gold, would you, meaning me or any dealers, be able to buy back these positions at these higher spot prices, assuming dealers have been buying gold all, all the time and around a thousand or less for non numismatic coins. And of course there there always is going to be buyers. And if we don't have a buyer for a particular market, we just sell it right back into the market. So, you know, you know, we eliminate the product. And uh, but if things continue there'll be no problem uh selling your gold at the time that you want to sell it. So um Usually, you'll find that someone doesn't have the cash flow to do so. It's usually, your local dealers, because they're waiting for the people to come in and buy from their inventories, and sometimes they'll have inventories. I mean, that's why when you sell your product to a local dealer, you know, the guy on the corner, the coin store, you know, he'll buy bullion coins back at, you know, $100 below spot. He'll buy $20 gold pieces at spot. So it doesn't matter what grade, he'll buy them at spot or very close. So, because uh, he doesn't want to buy them back because he doesn't have the cash flow to do so. So, uh, but that's why we deal nationally because we deal with national, we deal with the largest uh, wholesalers. Uh, one is the largest wholesaler in the world, so we don't have a problem liquidating for you. Then he has a question if the shares in gold and silver go up 10 to 100 times and the equity markets are decimated, will there be any buyers? It seems like the timing to get out of gold shares, gold coins, and into land, real estate, and business is critical. And how many months do you think we have, Bob, till hydroinflation kicks in and we leave the deflationary period? Um, we're not in deflation. Uh, inflation in the United States right now is over 9%. And if you look at the... Um, uh, price deflator, uh, it's showing 2.9%. Uh, the hyperinflation will begin this month. You won't see it for a while, but it'll be the beginning. It'll probably start showing up in the fall, and uh, we'll very quickly, uh, the government figures will very quickly go to 5%, and the real figures will go back to 13 and 5.8% inflation. And so uh, eventually we will go into deflation. But in the meantime, this is what's going to happen. And if gold rises to 2,000 and the government or government central bankers do a reverse 10 to 1 split on the dollar, will gold only be worth 2,000 an ounce? No, it will be 10 times that. I think it's safe to say, based upon inflation from 1980 until present, that on official figures, gold could go to 2000 to $2,500 an ounce. Real inflation would have it up somewhere between six and 7000 and that's really where it's going to go. And I think what governments want to do, they're going to have to go back on a gold standard. And I think they want to do it around $2,000 an ounce, but I don't think they're going to have that luxury. Uh, this is in from Tony. Um... He wants us to talk about the national census. Is it true uh, they're taking GPS coordinates of your house, and does he know why they are doing this, or do you know why they are doing this? Well, I have pictures that were sent to me by subscribers of them doing that to their houses. And I've had numerous letters from people who say they did that to my house. And they want to know where everybody is, and they're coordinating so they can more easily find people if they want to come and get them. And that's what they're doing. 
Well, I have a question on that, and it was interesting because it was on Memorial Day. There was a gal in a car going through the neighborhood, and she had a backpack on. You know, she was carrying a backpack. That's her. And she knocked at my door, and I never answered my door. You can knock all you want. If I answer my, well, I can't tell you what I do to you if I have to open the door, but no, I'm just kidding. So I never answered my door, and then I watched her uh, go over to my neighbor's house, but I couldn't see what she was doing. She was in there a long time and, and so forth. But you have Google. They're questioning people. They want to know everything about them so they can come and collect them. But you have Google. You have the zip codes. You have satellites that probably already map out each coordinate of each house, the location. I mean, why why would they want it put it on a GPS? I mean, they already have it. Did you ever see anything that the the government did that was logical? <laughs> no. Maybe it's duplication. I don't know. All we can do is guess, but there's a reason, and it's not good. At what if everything the government was doing was good, they tell us the truth, and they don't tell us the truth about anything. Well, I think they're nosing, but I think they're doing other things. You know, at what point will sellers of gold no longer accept the U.S. dollar? Gee, I, that's. Um, I would think that uh, perhaps when it was down around forty or fifty on the USDX. Now, that's just a guess. I mean, they're concerned now. They'll be more concerned at 71.16 where we hit before. Now, we moved down to 55.50, 45.40. Nobody, nobody's going to want to take the dollar. You will not want to be in dollars. That's why coins are so, so important. And, of course, having that food and other things in as well. This is not going to be nice. We're going to be looking at 35 to 50 percent unemployment, maybe even higher. I mean, these people haven't solved anything in 22 months. They created 14.8 trillion dollars worth of paper, and that's going to come thundering down upon the economy. When the government owns 70 percent of GM. How does that affect, like, the foreign countries? Or, I mean, are they to are they just totally separate corporations? Are they really not part of the, the the GM family? Or is it, I mean, if we own, if the government owns supposedly 70 percent, how does that affect? Or we, won't know it just until, we won't know until we get there. We have a nationalized corporation of what's left of General Motors. And, and we just don't know. All I know is that the countries have, companies have been destroyed, the two of them, and rightly so. And the reason they've been destroyed is they're bankrupt. Should have been led into bankruptcy five years ago. Yeah. Um, recently, this has been from Ivan, recently he heard about the National Economic Security and Reformation Act, which was passed by Congress in the year 2000. This act would restore constitutional law in U.S., but also abolish the Federal Reserve and income tax, as well as restore other constitutional rights. Whatever happened to this legislation? I don't know. I just don't know. And it just goes to show you I don't know everything. According to Al Jazeera, North Korea has declared an end to its half-century old armistice with the South, saying it sees Seoul's move to join a U.S.-led anti-proliferation initiative as a declaration of war. I don't understand the question. Please repeat it. North Korea has declared to end its half-century old armistice with the South. Um... That was to be expected. Uh, my question is, 